Good evening, horror fans and lovers of the macabre. My name's Scuzz Twitley. Welcome to Scuzz Scares. Tonight's terrifying tale is a rural legend of sorts. So dim the lights, make sure the doors are locked, and prepare to hear what the locals refer to as the barbed wire incident. It was a fine spring morning in Possum Glen, the grass all wet would do. The class of 1988 would be graduating in a month or two. Most kids were sitting and studying in the halls of Skankbush High, but three boys decided to skip school that day and enjoy the clear blue sky. There was Jeff and Mike and Billy Joe in a beat up GMC, smoking oregano they thought was pot underneath a sycamore tree. On the river bend, they cast their rods, hoping for a large mouth bass waiting for a bite or at least a buzz, but neither came to pass. So Jeff said, this sounds crazy, guys, but I am bored as shit. Let's cross the river, hike the hill, and fish old madman's pit. Old madman's pit, Billy Joe replied. You must be high as a kite. That crazy some bitch that lives up there will shoot you dead on sight. Without hesitating, Mike said, I'm in. He never thought much through. Billy Joe was the odd man out, only one thing he could do. So he just shook his head and said, all right, I guess, let's go. So they gather up their fishing poles and bag of oregano. Over the river and through the woods, the hills got dark and dense. Then in a grassy clearing stood an old rusty barbed wire fence. They helped each other over because the barbs were sharp and mean and made their way across the field to a sight few folks had seen. The old madman's pit, there it was deep and blue and sweet, nestled in a grove of pines by a field of winter wheat. The boys looked at each other with big shit-eating grins. They stripped down to their tatty whities and cannonballed right in. The water caught them by surprise, cold as a witch's titty. Billy Joe let out a howl they could have heard in Kansas City. A flock of crows took flight in fright. The wind began to howl. A dark storm cloud came rolling in. The air smelled something foul. A distant pop echoed through the trees and sudden dread took hold. The boys knew that sound all too well and it made their blood run cold. Then an old voice screeched from the bowels of hell. What you doing on my land? Jeff yelled, holy fucking shit, it's the old mad man. In the distance came a silhouette, gnarled and bent with age lumbering with a heavy gate and racking a pump 12 gauge. The boys went right straight for the shore and grabbed up what they could. In bare feet and their underwear, they hauled ass towards the woods. Now Jeff was quite the athlete, so he had set the pace. And when he saw that barbed wire fence, he hurdled it with grace. Mike was about five yards behind, a slight but nimble lad. He cleared those rusty barbs in stride, but only by Tad. Billy Joe brought up the rear like butter his thighs churn. The fence was high, but he was past the point of no return. He hit a gear he didn't know he had when he heard another shotgun blast. He planted one big chubby foot and launched his ample ass. The problem was the dew that day, so BJ's foot did slide, and a shriek that weren't quite human rang through the countryside. Mike and Jeff stopped in their tracks and quickly spun around to see Billy Joe beside the fence, writhing on the ground. Mike and Jeff went sprinting back. They couldn't leave their bud. Billy Joe clenched his crotch. His briefs were drenched in blood. He would have made it over clean if he jumped two inches higher. The part of him got good and snagged on that rusty old barbed wire. Mike turned white when he got close. Jeff's strong knees went weak. All three boys went into shock and couldn't even speak. Didn't take long to figure out where Billy Joe was cut, cause on the ground among the weeds was his bloody severed nut. Oh my God, Mike exclaimed, I'm gonna fucking hurl. Jeff let out a high pitched scream like a seven year old girl. Billy Joe was hurting bad, but staggered to his feet, looking down between his legs at shredded scrotum meat. He was so delirious his actions made no sense because he knelt down to grab his testicle beside that barbed wire fence. But he would knocked off his glasses and now could barely see. So instead of picking up his nut, he crushed it with his knee. 
the sickening squishing sound it made was just too much to bear. Mike threw up into a bush. Jeff pissed his underwear. Things were looking desperate. Billy Joe was gushing red. Then the old mad man called up to them. They were good as dead. They sure were ripe for the picking. Defenseless, pantless too. Would madman make them squeal like pigs, as rednecks are known to do? No, madman set the shotgun down when he saw the wretched three. Went right for the fishing pole Jeff had dropped beside a tree. He hopped that fence right quick and pulled out a pint of pure moonshine. Then poured that booze on BJ's bag and grabbed the hook and line. Without any hesitation, like a medic in the war, he went to work with hook and line and sewed up what was tore. That was it for Jeff right there. He fainted on the spot. Billy Joe was out cold too. He'd bled an awful lot. The old man got him in his truck and hauled him to the dock. And Billy Joe turned out okay. They even saved his cock. In fact, he up and had six kids. His one nut worked just fine. He sells bait and tackle now off Highway 49. Jeff ran track in college. Now he runs a local bar. Mike became a medic and he won the Silver Star. They never saw the old man again, but heard his name was Ray. He lived alone until he died and liked it just that way. The boys meet every year to raise a toast at Jeffrey's bar. To Ray and that lost testicle. They pickled in a jar! <laughs> Here's to you, Ray. <laughs> <laughs>